So I'd like to do a quick review on the order of operations. Some of you may know PEMDAS. Uh, PEMDAS stands for the order that we do our operations. Operations, we're going to be talking about mathematical ones. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, exponents, and parentheses. And by the way, um, books can use different things for parentheses. Sometimes they'll be the standard ones we know about. Other times they'll use the square brackets. They mean the exact same thing for us in math for now. So here we go. Um, 3 fourths plus 1 half times 4 minus 1 quantity squared. So PEMDAS says we do anything that's in parentheses first. So I do have a set of traditional parentheses there, so we'll do what's inside first. 4 minus 1. So you don't have to write down each of these intermediate steps, but you can. Like if you wanted to just write the 3 squared, that would be fine. In fact, if you wanted to do that part in your head and just write down 9, you could do that as well. So while I have this 3 squared here, a, a brief word on what that means. The squared is attached to the 3. Notice I have left it in parentheses because it has some other things uh, working on it. 3 squared, so a little aside, I'll stick it right down here, you got it? So 3 squared means I have 3 times 3. 2 is called an exponent, 3 is called a base. 2 tells me how many of the 3's I need, and I need to multiply them. So that's going to be a 9 for us. All right, so now I've done the P's. I don't have any parentheses. Well, these parentheses holding the 3 in are just telling us, okay, something else is going to happen to the 3. Then I do my exponents, and I have one of those. I have that 2 we were just talking about. The 2 is only applied to the 3. It's not applied to the 1 half, and I know it because that 3 is in parentheses, and that's where the 2 is attached, the little 2 up here. So I'm going to replace that 3 squared with a 9, because I do exponents after I do all of my parentheses. So now I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. You can leave them if you want, but I'm going to write it just as a 1 half times 9. Again, if you want, you can stick a 1 under that 9 so you make sure that the 9 stays on top and doesn't try to sneak down there on the bottom. So I did my parentheses. I had an exponent. I did that. Now I'm on to these guys, and these guys go together. Multiplication and division. And sort of the new theme in, in textbooks, so what you guys will all be dealing with, is you work left to right. So these guys have the same authority, but you work left to right. So I'm looking for a multiplication or a division. And so you might say, hey, but 3 fourths, that's a division. Well, you're right, and if you were going to parentheses or to decimals, you could do that now and change that to a .75, but we're not going to deal with it that way. We're instead going to look at this multiplication problem right there, 1 half times 9. Multiplying fractions, we multiply across the top, we multiply across the bottom. The 3 fourths I haven't done anything with yet, so now I have 3 fourths plus 9 halves. So I'm going to grab a new color so you can tell what happens next. Now I have to add these two fractions. And we all know that if we add and subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. So you look at the 4 and you look at the 2. The common denominator is 4. So I rewrite each fraction to have it. The 3 fourths has it already. The 9 halves, I have to multiply top and bottom by 2 to get it. So now I have 18 fourths. And when you add two fractions, what you do is you have that common denominator, that's in your answer, and then you add the numerators. 3 plus 18 is 21. In our world now, an improper fraction where the top number is bigger than the bottom is acceptable, is preferred, in fact. So you don't want to turn this into a mixed number because probably you'll have to turn it back. So leave it 21 fourths because it doesn't reduce. All right, next problem. Speed it up a little bit. So, uh, parentheses. Okay, I don't have any parentheses written like these guys, but I do have absolute value symbols. Absolute value are the two vertical bars like this, same thing as parentheses. So if you want to put that up here in your the same as parentheses model. So I'm going to do 7 minus 9 first. So 7 minus 9, getting a little bit ahead of ourselves in the book, 7 minus 9 is negative 2. All right, if you have $7, but you owe 9 or $2 in the hole. So now I have the absolute value of negative 2 plus 3 times 12. Yes, you can do the 3 times 12 at this point, but I will keep it apart for now. 
And then in the bottom I have 16 minus, now I have the square root of 9. Square roots are actually, since I don't have any more parentheses, I'm skipping ahead. Square roots are the same thing as exponents. So exponents and square roots have the same power. So square root of 9 is 3. Look back over here, it's the same idea that we did just um, on that last problem. So now let's see what I can have. Now I have the absolute value of negative 2. Well, that's not just negative 2. That absolute value changes that negative 2 to a positive 2. And the numerator of a fraction essentially, even though it's not written, get ready for it, has parentheses assumed. Same thing with the denominator. Those are implied grouping symbols. So you do clean up the top, clean up the bottom, and then we'll worry about the division. So 2, when I simplify the absolute value, 3 times 12 is 36. In the bottom I have 16 minus 3, 13. I, I feel it. I know you guys want to cancel those out. You cannot cancel between the top and the bottom until you've tidied up the entire top. That means I have to add those two numbers together. Because you'll see when I add those together, I get 2 plus 36 is 38 divided by 13. This fraction doesn't reduce, but this is the right answer. Be careful. If you would try to reduce this, so warning, warning. Don't cancel the 13s. I promise your textbook authors are going to try to lead you into that exact thing. They want you to incorrectly do this and get 4 out. That's not the right answer, but if you have a multiple choice test, I promise you that'll be one of the options. So never want a multiple choice test. And don't cancel until you've stopped simplifying.